Welcome back to the 26th of Remaking Hotline Miami in Game Maker Studio. And today we're gonna do a little bit of AI. So basically this dude is idle. And then for example, we have a little tester and then uh, this of course will be remedied in future videos. And for example, he's just going at specific point, waiting and then going back to a start position um, symbolized by the red dot, which is, I don't know, let's say for example, the target and the green one, which is not too terribly vi visible as a starting going back to position. So if you want to know how to do that in Game Maker Studio, stick around. This is one up Indie. I am a developer. So if you like what you're seeing, hey, why not consider sharing, liking and subscribing to boost the YouTube algorithm and help me out a little bit in the process. Alrighty, so quite a lot of things which we're going to do. Not sure how long the video will be. It will be long, believe me, but we're going to do quite a few things. So first of all, what we just have is an idle state. And then we're going to say like, hey, let's go to a specific position. A little bit of a drawing here. Sweet. And then for example, we say like, hey, let's go here. This is technically just no AI at the very beginning. But for that, first of all, we need kind of a movement system, which is then taking over and for that we're gonna do the grid based AI pathfinding which is inside Game Maker Studio and I did already a video on that so I'll link in the description below if you haven't checked it out because I'm gonna quickly redo it so let's get right into the good stuff. Alrighty so once we cleaned up all that stuff let's create our grid or pathway or whatever you want to call that and based on that the AI will handle the movement, which is pretty sweet. Therefore, we have to do a little bit less. So let's create our object, call it object setup pathway. I'm going to use the same terminology as I did in the specific, a little bit longer video. Therefore, hopefully you will find yourself at home there. For that, we just do very, very, very few things. Not too much. First of all, we will create a grid which is something like this. So I'm not gonna repeat myself. If you are not sure about that stuff, link in the description below. So once again, I create a grid. Then I want to say like, hey, we need to bounce off the walls. So we can define that. So MP grid add instances to what to grid. And then of course, the object wall, because this is then our orange wall. So here, once again, we establish that thing. And then, of course, let's give it a nice icon so we can actually distinguish it. Grid and place that sucker in the room because we want to have it. So here, once again, boom, let's place it into the room. So we have it. And as you can see, we're getting quite a lot of symbols. But um, this is, of course, then easier to distinguish. So this is our background, which is fading. This is our controller. This is the camera. And this is the grid. So here, good. And here, of course, we can do a little bit more and we can uh, draw the grid on the screen so we can actually check it out. So MP grid draw. And with that, we're going to draw nicely over everything so you can actually check out what is good and what is bad. And one last thing, for example, if we are going out of the room, it is a good thing So room. And it's a good thing just to destroy that thing because we don't need the grid. So uh mp grid destroy here we go grid um don't say for example there's of course another grid so grid destroy there's ds grid we are talking about the mp1 so please uh don't throw them around so once again this is mp mp because there's ds but ds is the other one here we go a little bit advanced so let's check this out Alrighty, so nothing is happening. Interesting. Ah, I guess I see, see where my arrows were. Once again, I place it on the invisible layer. Yeah, not the most successful one as it seems. So let's place it on instances. Sorry, my bad. I was like, huh? Why isn't that working? And once again, let's check this out. All right, this is working correctly. So as you can see, red areas are where we have walls and green areas, as you can see 
on the grid and we're going to utilize the grid to for the movement so um, the pathfinding can do its job righty this is already pretty sweet but we don't need to draw that so let's mark it out this is just so you can actually see that it is there it is working hopefully because we added our object walls and now once we have established this get rid of it alrighty so here once again this is pretty good and now let's go into some other concepts because now we're going to do the path finding uh, being implemented so what we can basically do is just tell our dude here hey let's go to a specific target location so let's first of all do it a little bit kind of in a dummy way and for that we're going to create two events which we are going to trigger and they will update once and this is kind of important we just want to have update uh, the update once to a specific location so we say user event zero and then other user event one ah here we go so i'm gonna quickly go into that so for example one we're gonna go and say description let's uh, go check out a specific target so as you can see now in the description it will say hey let's go to a specific target and the other one hey description let's go to a specific uh, let's go back how about let's go back <laughs> go back here we go not sure why this, this doesn't work and for that we need a few things so first of all for our pathfinding we need a path and then create path Path creates. I always throw that around. Uh, it's actually path add, my bad. And here we go. And now we have created an empty path. And of course, we need to, once we, for example, update that thing, we need to say, like, hey, let's go and, uh, well, create a new one and delete the old one. So, what we do, delete the old one which was empty but anyway or for example if it wasn't well we can change it anyway and therefore we're gonna uh, tell um, our enemy hey let's go here or let's go there then the next thing and once again this is should be the same we say mp grid path and then of course we got some input parameters which we want to have once again this is the same from the other video completely rehashing all the same stuff and therefore we just say like hey um, do it in a specific way but now um, we want to have a goal that we're gonna put in variables and these variables then would be called um, well position start and position target so here let's go into our enemy come on in our enemy and add them here so basically we're having variables for now which are at the same spot which is okay so a start position so um, the enemy wants it starting let's say for example here then he can go here and then for example just do nothing and then then going back therefore we need to memorize the very very start position so he can go into an idle state a total idle state and then we need a target position so therefore those two variables and for example where we say like hey go check out the target we input the target position then we say zero yeah. because the, uh, moving diagonally is not a bad thing then of course little uh, tooltip so we want to use the mp grid which is there and then we say like hey let's write on that path and use it because for now we just link the path with uh, the grid but for now nothing is happening and then we say hey write it and then once again we give it a specific speed value here once again let's create two more variables and this is of course then up to you later on we will uh, have different kind of values so for example here we have a walk speed which is checking checking and going which is slower and then we have one where we aggro now they are pretty slow but then you can actually see the process which is kind of important for me then we just say like hey start the path which one the one which we linked and then with a specific speed and then at the end at the end just stop and do nothing and then of course absolute because we want to go 
on this specific path. And here, once again, if we want to go back, we basically do the same thing. So copy paste that stuff, but we want to go back to our original starting position. So position X and position Y from the start. And here, once again, we will reuse these kinds of two events and then just trigger them to update the path once and then once you update it then everything runs automatically and once for example something is changing we can interject and then stop the path or update it or whatever and here once again as you can see then this will be a very flexible system but let's uh, for now nothing is happening so therefore we want to have a neat little thing which we call how do you call it we call it a little bit a tester there is the tester object tester which we're gonna input in there also so object tester give it a nice sprite so i can t put that of course inside the room also later on we will delete it because we don't need it not sprite the tester itself later on we're just gonna get rid of it because this is just for us so we can test out this stuff which is happening here now we have a little thing which we're gonna inject so we just say like hey if we have pressed our right mouse button could be of course left it doesn't really matter for me um this thing is already uh, uh, well blocked for throwing for the enemy uh, for the player but we can reuse it uh, for um, testing our enemy and then later on we can use it for something else so I was a little bit lazy but hey I guess this is good enough for and then what we're gonna do is say like hey the target position is then for example our mouse and then for example once we press let's say right mouse button here then the target will be here then we want our dude to go in this specific position and if we go back to our uh, our enemy then he cannot actually do anything and one thing you cannot trigger an event from another object so let's say we are in our tester and you'd it would be kind of neat if you could say like hey object enemy dot and then event uh, zero start not happening here and therefore we need to have a little bit of ai in here so the first thing which we want to do is just say like hey and bear with me as you can see this will be quite a lot we say like hey as our well state change so for example we say like hey state checkout then we're gonna copy paste that into our uh, tester and then we just trigger it object enemy dot checkout so we just go into the state and say like hey check it out and we can actually close it because we don't need our tester anymore so because we need to change the state else everything else is not happening here and what we're gonna do and this is the easy part pass here um, we just say like hey we want to check it out so what do we do we actually trigger the user event event user I always throw that around event and the user here we go and then for example we want to go zero the one which is then meant for checking out the target and then we say like hey if we are in this specific state cool check it out but and um, this would trigger that thing all the time which isn't too good and therefore we need to jump out of this specific state the checking out state or the checkouts and then therefore we say like hey we are actively checking out this is good for us and actually we can actually uh, go in there and therefore we just update once, go into user event, do the whole path thing, update it, go to a specific target, and actually let's uh, see that. Let's see it, let's see it. Let's... Alrighty, so as you can see, this dude is idle, and we press the right mouse, right mouse button, boom. And as you can see, the AI is going to this specific position. For example, we can actually update it. This is pretty sweet, so as you can see, um, he tries to find the optimal route of course if he's going a little bit faster it's pretty nice so let's go 
check out as you can see ai is working without us doing anything of course about the rotation all that stuff we gonna change that later on alrighty so this is basically the first part and in the second part we will do a little bit more and then with a cooldown timer then we are going back alrighty that was it from this part and see you i guess tomorrow or in two days for the next part have a good one one up in